You know, like Jerry always says, you know, the sound starts up here. You know, it starts in your mind. You have to imagine what you want the sound coming out of your bell to sound like. And the thing that I think, you know, like you, you talked about Larry and his system, because, you, you know, and I recently got introduced to the uh, Stevens Costello method by... I think possibly the best trumpet player that I've ever had the pleasure of hearing live and hanging out with. And it's this guy, uh, Gerardo Rodriguez, plays lead for Mark Anthony. Oh, okay. And I've never heard anything like it. Like, I mean, I sat there for a 90 minute concert and this dude didn't miss nick chip one note all his solos were imaginative and just i mean his sound just never ever changed and i was just like man how are you so they came out and he came to town and i was just like you know we'd been friends on social media and i was just like man i want to come check out your show and you know if you have time I'd like, you know, let's, I'd love to take you for, you know, a meal or something and just sit down and, you know, talk trumpet. And he was all but happy. I mean, he was just so happy to do it. So we went out, we got some breakfast and, you know, he was telling me about the Stevens Costello thing. And he was just like, man, like, that's the best thing that my teacher introduced me to. So I started to, immediately. I just went and I got the book and, you know, the videos and all that stuff to start really, you know, trying to dive into that stuff because the one thing that it really stresses is like efficiency. And I've never seen anyone play as efficient with so much power as Gerardo does. I was truly, truly astonished <laughs> by how he just like, I couldn't believe it. And he was just like, yeah, man, it's that Stevens Costello stuff. And that's how I got, I started going down that rabbit hole. And that's, you know, I ran into, you know, Larry and, and I'm just like, okay, there has to be something to this. Cause all these guys have huge sounds and like, they just seem to have like unlimited range. I want to know what's going on there. And I just really been practicing that and practicing that way. So I thought that, you know, of course, I guess me being a bigger guy, people were just kind of like, well, yeah, you know, you put a lot of air through the horn and this and that. And I'm just like, I'm now finding out that it's really not necessary to kill yourself to play in those registers, you know, the extreme upper register. It's all about how you use the air and the compression that you use. And I mean, there are guys that are, you know, toothpicks compared to me that are playing like that. And I'm just like, man, so there has to be something to this. And I've been just practicing that lately and it's really paying dividends. So. Well, yeah, I mean that, that whole idea about compression and, and, and I think it, where, where it occurs becomes the question. You know, it's the, is, is it, uh, is it occurring in your, your abdomen is it occurring in your chest is it occurring in your throat is it occurring in your chops is it, it because of the resistance, you know, using a smaller bore horn. So like all these different people use those different mechanisms, oh, absolutely. To, you know, to, to kind of create that balance mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and it's, it, it's kind of like, I, I like to use an analogy, like, you know, like a, a basketball, um, that, and you see this in a lot of, in, in pretty much every sport, but the music as well, that a lot of times the people that are the greats, I mean, like the goats, um, they can't explain to you why they're so good. They, they, can't, they, they can't tell you how to do certain things. It's just like, well, you, you take the ball and you, you, you look at the basket and you throw it in. Yeah, that's right. it. That's it. Um, but sometimes, you know, it takes those people that have really 
had to dive in to figure stuff out. That's why yeah, I really like the Stevens methods. I, I'm a real big fan of the uh, Reinhardt system mm -hmm. simply because of the the analytical approach to you know, the classifications of you know you know if you're if you have this body type then this is probably what you should be doing and and it's right. different than what another person should do. So kind of like helping to 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 diagnose uh, the potential problems and to find the most uh, efficient method to produce the maximum effort or maximum results in, a, in any given person. So yeah, the, I, I really dig that, that concept with the Stevens. Um, so with, with your playing, uh, you know, you're talking about sound um, and, you know, that efficiency, because, you know, that, that book, you, you know, well, I don't want to say book since you said that so much of it is, is uh, off the cuff, uh, but, you know, the, your demands on, on the, on the gig with, with Dave, um, you know, you, you've got, you've got some blowing to do and you're going to be all over the horn. You're going to be in the, up, the extreme upper register. You're going to be in the lower register. Um, and, you know, trying to get the sound that you want to get, uh, consistently and with the most ease so that you, you, you can get through all those gigs that you have to do. Um, you know, do you, do you rely, do you find yourself relying more on uh, the technology to, to help you through, uh, you know, using sound reinforcement, using monitors and things like that, or do you kind of just tune that out and just, just go, go with your own natural sound? Yeah, I kind of do a little bit of both. I, like I try not to rely on the technology too too much because we use in ear monitors and a lot of trumpet players. You know, I have a lot of guys reaching out to me asking. It's just like, well, what do you do? Like, how do you like the adjustment period? If you've come from playing floor monitors to putting the sound directly in your ear, like it just it can be an adjustment. <laughs> so, you know, I usually play with my ear because the drummer is on my right so i play with that ear all the way and protect that hearing but i play with my left partially out so i could hear the room and i could hear the saxophone player who's to my left so you know but i've got it now where i could just play with both ears in like if i'm doing like some tv stuff and the setup is different and there's keyboards and guitar amps all around me I, i'm cool to play with both ears in because i know enough now how to play by feel and muscle memory so you know i mean i think mostly you know and i can't wait to try it out when we get back on the road because i mean i've only been checking out this Steven stuff since, you know, we got off the road in November, right before Thanksgiving. And it kind of validated some of the things that I've been doing already, like in terms of playing in the extreme upper register, like I'm not really forcing anything. I'm not using my stomach or my diaphragm or my chest or my, even my throat for compression. Everything that I use in terms of compression is in the oral cavity. And that was one of the things that when I was reading through this book, they were just like, oh yeah, you know, the compression is all created here. You're using the air that's already in there. And it was just kind of crazy because I was watching, you know, Larry's videos. And when he was doing his, you know, thing with the tube and his system with the pressure gauge, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly how I blow when I'm playing stuff like in the extreme upper register. So I was just like, okay. And that's just something that I just kind of figured out on my own. I didn't know that there was a method to it. It was just like, oh, I kind of figured out that I could do that thing and I could get these notes way beyond double high C and going up into the triples. I'm just like, oh, I could just do that thing. And I, it wasn't really a thing for me. And then people started it was just like, man, like a lot of people can't do that. I'm just like, really? Cause I, I just kind of figured it out and yeah, it is what it is. But now that, you know, like you said, like reading the actual, you know, analytical part of it where somebody actually breaks it down, I'm just like, oh, okay. Makes sense. But I'm always one of those people that has to experience things for myself in order to truly get it.